Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. I'm Beatrice Murad, and today I'm joined by Andy Potter. Hello. Today we are discussing Marvel Rising Initiation, which is a series of six four-minute long anima- animated shorts that set up an upcoming animated film, Marvel Rising Secret Warriors. The film is set to premiere on Disney Channel later this year, so this is our first taste of what it's going to be like. Um, spoiler warning, we are going to talk about all these shorts. It's, it's really just 20 minutes of footage. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. Um, it doesn't take too long to get through. And we will have a very, very, very brief non-spoiler discussion before we dive into spoilers. So if you're still indecisive about it, you can listen in to that. But, and I will warn you before we get full into spoilers, but, uh, yeah, just, just watch it. Just go. And it's on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's on YouTube. Yeah. So you have no excuse. I was yeah. the fool who decided to go through the Disney Channel, like, app thing. And I was like, oh, I'll do it this way. That, that, that app. They need, they need to fix I- that app. Because I the, watched – it's bad. It's bad. It's, it's just the way it's set up. It's just – it's not a smooth experience like, say, something like Amazon Prime or Netflix or any other streaming service. That one, like, the the way it's set up is not great. So I recommend going through YouTube. It's, it's only – it's all in one video. I watched it on YouTube. It's all just – like, you don't even have to go to, like, six different videos. It's all just made, like, one episode of television which is in great. one video. Which is yeah. great. In the app, they split it into six, and it's silly. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Because, like, yep, we'll get into it. But but the shorts, they're they're just they – just, they feel like commercial breaks more than separation yeah. Yeah. from a – Yeah, I mean, that's the, yeah. Ma- that's, that's the magic of the app. It manages to really capture the commercial breaks on the actual Disney Channel. You know how oh, they, you know how they feel like incredibly present, and they feel yeah. very disruptive. Well, they feel just as disruptive on well, the it... app. <laughs> like <laughs> they, they managed captured... to capture it. They really did. They were like, they... "We are going to get our ads in," and <laughs> they succeeded. But um, they anyway, did it. yeah, they. I mean, good on them for really capturing the channel. They, ha- they, they good have on a them. Vision. They had a vision, Beatrice. <laughs> they were like, we need the channel exactly the way it is on the app. All they're missing is the Disney Channel stars doing the Mickey thing with the light sticks. That's oh, all they're missing. God. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you can find out more on this podcast at OverlyAnimated.com. You can subscribe to us on iTunes at OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes. Where we appreciate your star ratings or search for Overly Animated on your favorite podcatcher. All right. So very briefly, non-spoiler discussion. What did you think? Did you like these shorts? That's kind of a loaded question because there are some things in these shorts that I really liked. I liked the characters. I liked uh, Gwen especially. But at the same time, this really did feel like it was just weird exposition for characters and not really an episode of anything. Like, cause these, The way I look at these shorts, I really don't view them as six separate shorts. I view them as just one episode of television because that's really how they're given to us. They all are just one continuous plot. And uh, they're they're fine, but I I just there's a couple of things in here that kind of frustrate me. There's a couple of weird plot points. Um, what's the agent's name? I'm, I apologize, I forget Quake. her name. Quake. Thank you, Agent Daisy Johnson. Quake. Yes, that's it. Um, she her line about knowing that Gwen was Mister was 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 Mister Stacy's <laughs> daughter. Well, I mean, yeah. Let's uh, hold on. Let's, oh, let's, oh. I'm sorry. I it's okay. Well, I mean, it's fine because we know it's Gwen Stacy is yeah. Ghost Rider, so that's not. And we know that Gwen's father is like this. Isn't like a reveal. This is like no. This is this like is very wild. clear. Like this is if if you know who Gwen Stacy is from the comic yeah. books, this is like saying the sky is blue. Like this is yeah. Sorry. So her dad was always a police officer, like this... the police chief. Like this is not spoilery, but careful. Yeah, sorry. I, I apologize. This is just my one of my bigger gripes. Of the episode. We'll talk. We'll, we'll talk we'll about it later. It. Then. Yeah, but that's one of my one of the biggest gripes is how it ends. It. Um. I do not. But at the same time, I do like a lot of the interactions between the characters. I like how Gwen interacts with Patriot. I like how uh, Miss Marvel and Squirrel Girl interact together. But and I don't know. It just feels a little empty sometimes. It feels like the set pieces are really not alive because like they're the only people in new york for some reason there's no one else in these backgrounds and that feels a little weird it really does feel like a web thing they made and it's hard to decide how much of that how much how much weight i put in that if that makes sense because it 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 it, it succeeded at what it was i'll give it that it's just on its own it's not 
amazing, but it does make me a little. It does make me pretty excited to see Secret Warriors because I am excited to see these characters again. So I guess it did succeed. Do it, you do you think that um, in Secret Warriors these issues are going to exist or no? I have. I haven't seen any trailers for the Same. movie. Have, I haven't either. I think this is the, this is the teaser. I feel like for the for the movie, yeah. If anything, I. If it's like this in the movie, if it's this, because this is, it does feel low budget. This isn't like me being mean to the animators. They're doing the best they can with what they have. It's just sometimes it does feel like they didn't put, have the money. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't have the money to put in more stuff. Like there's no crowds of people walking around New York City. Right. They New took York shortcuts. City? They totally took shortcuts. Yeah. They had to. It, it wasn't, yeah. And that's, not and that's why all just... the fighting happens in the middle of the night. So they can be like, oh, this part of the city just doesn't allow people around. And so that's fine. But if that's how it is for the movie, it's going to be a little frustrating. Gotcha. It's going to be, it's going to be a little bit difficult to swallow that because this is just, this makes sense as a short. Okay. That, that's all I'll really say. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, well, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I agree with the shortcuts in my, in my head because I knew this was like extra. Like for me, I saw this as gravy. This is something that like, this isn't really, suppo- I, I feel like this is, I don't know. We'll get into why possibly they decided to go this route and why they decided to make these shorts. But, um, I felt that this was just some additional fun little thing. It's not the main course it's not the main thing we're gonna get so i wasn't that bothered by the low budget quality um for me what was what really stood out was the tone what really stood out to me was how like where they were placing this in terms of like the age demographic they were going for that's what like really fascinated me i was really interested in in these characters and how they were being portrayed and we'll get into why later i i'm very pleased with what i got and that yes, okay. at times it may seem a little, it may seem a little juvenile because again, it's for Disney Channel, it's for a younger demographic. But even despite the fact that it's for a younger demographic, there are still moments in there that for an adult viewer, you or even just like a teen viewer that you would enjoy. That they would be like, ooh, there's meat in here for further like analysis. There's meat in here for something more. Um, so it was it, yeah. It's, sorry, just not to cut you off, but I think it's important to note that this is the show made by Marvel, correct? Not the yes, yeah, yeah. So I, I just want to make sure that's clear because there's there's a lot of shows and a yeah. lot of stuff being produced for Marvel and yeah. Spider Man. This is this is actually produced by Marvel, and this feels and I agree, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. This feels like they're targeting a different group than they have been with their movies lately. This yeah. feels like they're kind of being like we're missing a we're missing a age group we're missing a demographic and this can really hit it and i think it nails it i think it nails getting the young young girl audience and i i'm not saying that in a bad way i think that's great no yeah totally i mean and not just girl audiences like boys can watch this and have a bunch of fun no it's definitely like for instance i wish i had the like for me when i was younger my version of this was kim possible Mm-hmm. You know, it's that demographic. The girls growing up watching Kim Possible when I was younger, that's the demographic that they want to have for this. Because Kim Possible yeah. is no longer. And I'm trying to think of what's like a good parallel. I mean, again, um, I don't think there is. There is. At least on Disney, because you can make the argument that Korra was something. Well, it's yeah. no longer there, but it was something. Um, you can make, I can make an argument that maybe Mysticons is also included in that in terms of current shows, maybe. But, um, but yeah, in, the only show I could think of that m- matches, like, kind of demographic-wise was Kim Possible, and it's no longer here. Um, I mean, there's going to be a live-action version, but, I mean, we won't talk that... about that. <laughs> um, that's not for this podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so, so, yeah, so I'm just, I, for me, it just made me really happy to see I... this, to see, okay, now we're finally filling in this hole, and Marvel's really smart to fill it. Um, I, I, yeah. I'm just, uh, with that said, though, I'm really not, I, I'm a little concerned that some of these characters won't show up in uh, the movies now because I really love Miss Marvel. And if this I don't all- know. I don't think so. I, because, look, Gwen is showing up in the Spider-Verse movie. That's for Sony, obviously. Yes. But, again, so the Spider-Man characters can't – I mean, maybe later. Who knows? What, yeah. Who knows what Marvel yeah. and Sony are doing? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> we can't take any guesses about what happened, what's happening with Gwen, Spider-Gwen, Ghost Spider, whatever we're calling her. But – 
Look, yeah. maybe like Squirrel Girl will be a bit of a stretch, but I mean, yeah. Kevin Feige has gone on the record and said that Miss Marvel is a character that they're looking into. And he made that statement in a very similar way as when he made that statement for Captain Marvel and Black Panther I, several years before it was announced. I, I do think that Captain Captain Marvel existing does make Miss Marvel a lot more oh, likely. Oh, totally. I mean, Miss Marvel yeah. doesn't exist without Captain Marvel. Yeah. Like a lot of people were like, "Oh, well, why hasn't Miss Marvel shown up before? Why Captain Marvel first? And I'm like, "Well, you don't know the character if you're saying yeah, this no, because Miss Marvel is inspired by Captain it's Marvel. Like That's the, the whole, whole purpose. Point. Yeah, the whole purpose she's there is because Miss Marvel, like she exactly, she takes up Miss Marvel's mantle. So uh, I, I, I think if we see, not to get off and continue this tangent on the live action stuff, but if we see Captain Marvel, if if we get a little more, because we are going to get depth to her in the movie, but if we get a little more like of a darkness to her, a little bit of, a, of another side to her in this movie that we're going to get. I think that just increases the odds of Miss Marvel because it feels like we need an idol for Miss Marvel that is a little bit not perfect, and that yeah. makes a more interesting story. Totally. And I would just really love to see that because Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan is just incredible. I didn't get enough of her in this short. That might also be why because I love Kamala. <laughs> uh, but I- I'm excited to see a lot more of her in the movie in Secret Warriors. That's for sure. All I'm going to say is, and I'm putting it out, this is the last thing I'll say about the live action MCU. All I'll say is, Kamala Khan will appear in a post credit scene. Like, for Captain Marvel, she's going to appear in a post credit scene. I am making I, that claim right now. And I don't... I think she will. I think she's going to be an Easter egg in the first Captain... Not maybe in the first Captain Marvel movie, but, like, in the post credit scene where it's, like, takes place back in the future. She's going to appear somehow, somewhere. She's going to be at the end looking up at the... Looking at the TV, being like, oh, my God, who is that? And it's going to happen. I don't know if, look, for me, it's Inhumans that are the question mark. And I don't know if she'll be an Inhuman in the MCU. But They can say mutant now, though, can't they? They can. They can. Because they, they, they're, I think it's, what, it's finalized now, 20th Century Fox. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Yeah. All well, right, we're, yeah. yeah, I won't comment on that because I have a lot to say about what you said, but it's not what we're here to talk about. We're, we'll talk about it on the Discord. Feel free to join yeah. us on Discord. You know, yeah. it's fun. We have a, we have a lot of these discussions on Discord. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get into the spoiler section. Oh, God, Dylan's yeah. going to be so mad at me because we went so off topic. Anyway, um, let's talk about spoilers. It's spoiler warning. Go away. We're going to we're going to talk spoilers. Like go three, two, one. We're done. All okay. right. So just very briefly, let me just sketch out oh, yeah. what happens in these six episodes. Um, basically most of what we, see, what we see in these shorts are setups and introductions. Like we, nothing really happens. We mentioned it a little bit before, but essentially we just, we meet Ghost Spider, which is Gwen Stacy. That's her name. I don't know. Do you like that name, Ghost Spider? I don't, but at the same time, I don't know why they chose. It, like, it feels like that's the name that the police chose. We never heard Gwen say her own name. It's yeah. completely possible that she calls herself Spider Woman because that's what she calls herself in the comics, right? Spider Woman. But the thing is, it's like, will she call herself Spider Woman? Like, is there a Spider Man in this? Okay, we'll get that. Oh, I'm yeah. getting ahead of myself. I'm <laughs> getting ahead of myself. Anyway, all right. Go Spider. It's fine. I'm like, all right, fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. Whatever. There's so too mean- much. It's too exciting. It's too exciting. <laughs> okay, there's just even just with one name that already tells us so much about the world. It does. Um, but basically, we get we meet Ghost Spider, we meet Miss Marvel, we meet Squirrel Girl, Patriot, Quake, Gwen's dad, her friends, um, and basically the police think that Ghost Spider killed a boy, um, Gwen's best friend Kevin. The police can't it- catch her, so they call in Shield agents Quake and Patriot to help. Obviously, Gwen doesn't ki- didn't kill Kevin, obviously, because he's her best friend. What we learn is that Kevin was an inhuman, and he was killed by another inhuman for reasons we don't yet know. And Gwen is the one who is blamed for his death. Well, at least Gw- Ghost Spider, not Gwen. Um, so, while trying to find the real killer, Gwen is fights with Squirrel Girl and Miss Marvel and Quake and Patriot. Uh, she convinces Miss Marvel, Squirrel Girl, and Quake that she's innocent, and we finish off with her continuing her search, where while Miss Marvel and Squirrel Girl are assigned to protect the city while she's gone. Um, so we already kind of talked about this of what we were expecting in terms of plot. Again, it's six minutes. It's not that like what, it's twenty minutes really an episode. Like, yeah. In total, it's not. I was I wasn't expecting too much, but you were a little disappointed with the plot. I was a little disappointed. Um, more not not because of the plot per se but because of just some of the weird things some characters did it felt like a strange 
it felt like a strange leap for Quake to know that Gwen Stacy was Gwen Stacy under the hood, like yeah. I accidentally said earlier. It's a little bit of a it was a little bit of a jump for me when um it felt a little strange how Gwen was so quick to talk to Squirrel Girl and Miss yeah. Marvel. It it, it it really felt like we were just setting up situations for the, these expositions to happen. Right. And that's fine for a web show like this, but I'm but without having seen any trailers, because I don't think they've released a trailer for no, Secret no, Warriors. No. They've all only been really showing this stuff. I'm concerned that this is how it's going to be structured for the movie. And if I'm wrong, that is great. If this is just a cherry on top like you're expecting, I am very pleased with this. That This is just like a little fun thing we get before the movie. But it concerns me that they haven't released a single trailer yet for the actual movie. Um and I, because I think it comes out in like a month, right? Does it? I mean, I just, I just saw like late 2018. I oh, did did they not have a date for it? That I makes me. A, I don't know if they do. I I was ex, I was expecting maybe like November or something, but I mean, uh, it might. I mean, I was expecting like maybe for like Thanksgiving weekend because I'm just thinking like when's the best time to market this? Because if it's a month out, then we should have gotten something by now. Maybe we're gonna get more at New York Comic Con. Oh, you're right. It has not been announced yet. They've just said um late late 2018 and of note i didn't rec i didn't realize this at first captain marvel is on the poster for yeah, this yeah captain marvel's on the poster america chavez is on the poster oh yeah a lot of people are on this poster so that's why i'm thinking i'm not maybe that's why i'm not as worried because there's a lot more characters than than what we got in, yeah in, in, in this in these shorts i just think like for me what is the purpose of these shorts? I mean, did we really need them is my thing. I, I'm not sure what they did really that we wouldn't get without um, – like I, I, I can't understand what expedition we got here that we're not going to get in the movie. You know what right, I mean? Because right, cause I feel like a lot of the stuff here – like. D- does someone need to watch these shorts in order to understand yeah. the movie? Like, why did Marvel shoot themselves in the foot once more with having people, forcing people to do, having, forcing people to watch something before the movie that they actually want to see? You know, because, you know, like, again, a lot of people, that was the complaints for Infinity War was, again, we had 10 years of this. Like, if you hadn't seen it so far, this movie wasn't made for you. But for Infinity War, a lot of people complained that if they went in blind, they wouldn't know what to do. So for this animated movie, if someone goes in blind and doesn't see the sh- these shorts, then will it will what it will it be fine? I just and, don't know. Like, are we not going to see any of the Kevin stuff in the in the movie? Because that we seems might, strange. we might. Maybe it's it's one of the many plot threads, or maybe but, it's the main plot thread. Even I okay. don't think it's the main one because why would it be if like Captain Marvel's in it? If America Chavez is in it, it's all going to be about who killed Kevin. I doubt it. Uh, it, but it you know might what it be. Could, you know what it could be. It could be that. It could be the classic. Um, you know, there was the Clone Wars, quote unquote, movie that just kickstarted right. the show. It could be that this quote unquote movie we're getting is more like a few episodes strung together, and it's and it could be that they really want to turn this into a TV show. A lot of people. That's what. That's the theory. A lot of people have is that the movie is going to be the in like the. The, I guess, like, the premiere of, like, a TV show. Like, they're probably going to have a TV show announced that's going to be Marvel Rising colon something else. Yeah, um, that, that, that's my ex- – because what I'm thinking is if if we're not going to get into Kevin in this movie, there's no reason why we should have gotten this stuff here. And if we are getting it into the movie, there's no reason for them to reanimate it. You know what right. I mean? Like, why would they animate it here, here yeah. if they wouldn't animate it there? And if they did animate it there, they would have used the movie animation here. Like, it just, it, it's just strange. I'm, I'm, if this yeah. isn't supposed to be kickstarting a TV show, a lot of the exposition we get here just doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> it, um, also, there was that whole, there was one line dropped about, like, a big, like, wave of, like, um, green smoke coming over oh, New yeah, York. Oh, but that's the inhuman backstory, though. Yeah. But, but like, why would they drop that here unless that I, was supposed to be something? You know, I think – I mean, here's the thing, though, because the inhuman backstory is – what that tells me is that in the co- – and usually they are in the in the animated stuff. They're a lot more faithful to the comics than in, uh, yeah. in live adaptations. But what this tells me is that this explains – this this is not just set up for Kevin. This is set up for Miss Marvel. This is set up for yeah. all the inhumans that are happening. So I – and here's the thing, like – 
what was interesting to me about that reveal is they didn't really even explain that well. It was as no. if they, they explained as if assuming that you knew exactly what the yes. inhuman cloud was. Like they didn't explain what an inhuman was. They were just like, you know, when the cloud happened and he became an inhuman, and it's like, whoa, like they're dropping that as if they're saying mutant. And if it was mutant, then no one would care because it's become so common to say, oh, he's a mutant. Like X-Men, we know what they are. And humans, not so much. I it, it, And that's another one of those exposition pieces that just doesn't make sense. Like, let's say, are they going to be talking about Inhumans in this movie? Then why didn't we talk more about Inhumans here? We just kind of kept dropping the word right, Inhuman right. over and over and over again. Right. It feels like, honestly, this short makes more sense if the movie has more expedi- exposition than this short. You know what right, I mean? Right, it yeah. feels like a lot of the stuff here makes sense with the idea that we know more about the world already. Right, right. Because a lot... Yeah. yeah. It, it's I mean, just strange. Yeah, it is strange. And I definitely think that, like, had... I don't know, had someone who isn't like us and doesn't know what an inhuman is, like, would they would they be confused? They'd probably be pretty confused. It, I, I'm going to guess very strongly that they'd be confused if, like, some person, some kid randomly watched this be like, what was that? Like, it's not that confusing, the idea of it. It's a very common... Right, super- right. But the way oh. they explained it was kind of confusing. And you're just, right. This is, the mo- this is the time to do it. This is the time to explain it. And they kind of... Yeah. It, 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 like, this is the place where you get into the nitty-gritty for that comic book nerd that wants to hear about it. Because in the movie, they're not going to have time to go, like, this is how it happened. This is the perfect time to have a short about this and how Miss Marvel got her powers, how Kevin got his powers, and how any other human in this movie got their powers. Like, they're not going to really have time for that. It's, but it would have been really cool to see it here. And yeah. it wouldn't really have added much. Like, I don't need to see someone get their powers in a movie. Like, you don't right. need that. Yeah. I think I think Spider-Man Homecoming really proved that. You don't need to do that to have yeah. a good origin story. And, and I don't know. It just – it feels like they didn't know what they wanted to accomplish with this short. And that does not – again, that's not a hit at the writers or the animators. It's – Somebody wanted to do this in, in like the hierarchy of Marvel, and then they said, cool, that's a good idea, and no one really extrapolated from that what this should really accomplish, because I don't know what, I, I don't know what it accomplished, Beatrice. I just I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're not giving them enough credit. Maybe it's that they made the movie. They already had – they were in the yes. process of making it. They were going to just do the movie, yeah. and then they started realizing, oh, wait a minute – we need there are certain holes in here that could be cleared up a little bit if we add something else and they yeah. decided instead of adding it to the movie and put the resources into that they were like let's just make these animated shorts because it's not that important to the movie or maybe no. these, these were cut scenes from the movie to set it up and they decided to just take that little chunk out and you know so maybe yeah you know like all all of our reservations i feel depend on on the movie oh. Of and course, what, 100%. what it does and what it, what it will do. And at the moment, we just don't know. So that's why we have these reservations. Yeah. I, and I want to be clear to anyone listening. Like, I'm not trying to, like, talk crap or anything. Like, I think these – I think the workers on this are great. It's just that I have reservations because they have literally not showed us a single trailer of the movie. That's really we what – probably will get a Comic-Con. We'll probably yes. get a New York Comic-Con. New York Comic-Con has always been better with animation than – at least, yeah. like, in terms of, like, Disney, D- like, TV animation. I mean, that's not true because Steven Universe kind of shows new episodes for yeah. San Diego Comic-Con. But anyway, point is, we'll probably get stuff. We will. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Um, probably. Who knows? Who knows? We might not. I don't know anything. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so let's talk about the animation then. Let's talk about these action sequences because okay. yeah, certain sure. people in the Discord, again, plugging in our Discord, join us. We talk a lot it's fun. about stuff. It's fun. Perry Dab. That's all I'm going to say. And we make fun of Beatrice a lot, so you can oh, join us you in make, that. They, if you want to join in on the bullying, feel free. Like, it's, it's, it's lovable bullying. Okay, it's fine. Eh, I, from some I, people it is. From some people. Anyway, um, so... A lot. Of, some people weren't impressed by the action sequence, and some people didn't really like what they saw. They. I, what did you think? I think the action scenes again for this web series for what it was. I thought they were pretty good. I thought they were like they weren't like big over the top like Marvel movie like level like crazy action scenes, right. but they fit this medium. I thought. I thought they got across 
the general power levels of the characters, which I think is a good thing for this short. Like, I should understand how strong Miss Marvel is coming out of this. I should understand how strong Squirrel Girl and Ghost Spider and Patriot are. And I think I have a good grasp on that in this universe, how strong they all are in comparison to each other. And I also got a grasp of kind of the action scenes they want to show here. They want to show more of deliberate action where the characters are kind of jokey and they get time to yell quips at each other and that's great i think that's good i also liked that um the show wasn't afraid to um what's the word i'm looking for it wasn't afraid to get a little sillier with with the um just with the medium because there's some things here that they can do because it's animation that they couldn't do in a live action movie like the whole scene with tippy toes uh eating the biting at the webs was pretty funny and it but and i don't think it'll work in any other medium because it's just it just doesn't really make sense yeah and i didn't and i guess with the tone here it didn't bring me out i think it fit the tone of what we were watching and i think it fit the tone of the fights we got and i guess that's my general idea of it it just i think it fit the fights fit what we were seeing they weren't crazy the choreography was was solid it it didn't there wasn't like crazy hand to hand stuff like we get in some anime series, but like even though Squirrel Girl clearly wanted that, <laughs> uh, but I do think that they fit, especially the fight between Patriot and Ghost Spider. I think that was yeah. a very solid fight. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I agree. I agree that for what I was expecting, I was like, I was pleased with it. Again, I wasn't yeah. expecting the craziest of scenes. Um, and I will say, if anyone doubts the animation, go watch the band practice scene because that was some solid animation. Them play like her playing the drums, Gwen. Like it yeah. looked solid in her the way she moved her head. Like I was like, this looks good. This looks really good, especially for that for and- this type of like web medium. I was very surprised by the quality in that situation so yeah. give it like, i feel like they decided that instead of making the action sequences look cool they decided to make gwen playing the drums and look i think cool. they just really tried to make the characters look good yeah. because if you notice the scene where kamala meets up with squirrel girl i, I keep forgetting squirrel girl squirrel girl's um um out of costume name i'm sorry uh doreen sorry there it is doreen she um when they meet up and they have the cupcakes and stuff i think that was pretty animated pretty well too like they hug they like they're like climbing all they're like kind of like just shuffling around each other it was pretty fun and i think they really emphasized in this they really wanted to make sure that the introduction of the of the girl the girl superheroes that they had time not out of their costume to be animated well and look like people look like fully realized people and i really appreciated that before we got into fights and i think that's web series perfect place to do that kind of stuff for us to see hey gwen stacy has a band which is really true to the comics kamala and doreen are friends and they know that each other are superheroes doreen still is a squirrel like it, <laughs> it, and likes cupcakes like these are things that we can get in th- those are good things from this web serial like i really like that we touched on those things because we don't we don't need to find out about that in the in the movie and if they do touch on them in the movie there's nothing wrong that we already touched on them once before it, yeah. it's fine if we see gwen playing in a band again like, I think these are really, these are, like, perfect for a web series like this, moments like that. See, but that's why I think that we are going to get a TV series. Because I don't think, like, say, Mary Jane's going to appear on, on the, in the movie. I, I think that depends on how important we have the others, like, their secret identities be. Because I'm not sure, because we didn't see Kamala Khan or Doreen Green's personal life yeah. yeah which was kind of i didn't Sad, uh, i know I, I wanted to see more of them but that's just because i really love kamala and i and, and i'm really interested to see how they do squirrel girl because squirrel girl is a little bit hit or miss to be fair yeah. <laughs> and it's not the fault of the writer she's difficult to write because she's really kind of random like like she's half she's a lot. random sometimes yeah. it, it's difficult but um but i think they nailed them but i just wish we'd seen some of their personal lives and but I do think we're going to see the band again in the movie. I think 100% we're going to see it again. I don't know. I feel like they're going to go full on into like a crazy adventure. Like, and then during like the, and then, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Do you we'll think see. they're going to go all over the place? I, I'm no, pretty- no, 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 no. I don't think they're going to go all over the place. I think it's that we're going to go straight into a like, into the mystery of like who killed Kevin or whatever. And we're just going to go straight into like from one superhero in a costume to another superhero in a costume to another superhero in a costume. Then they all meet up and then they have the big fight and then it ends there. And then it ends probably with like Kamala, Squirrel Girl, Gwen Stacy or whatever. Maybe at the end meeting up without costume or 
something yeah being like okay like let's keep we like this let's keep doing this and then that starts the tv show and that's when you start getting like mj is in this tv show okay so you I think you, that that's what you're feeling like what i'm feeling is more that um we're gonna get like an we're gonna get like an a plot and a b plot of a plot is gwen with her personal life and b plot is gonna be Kamala Khan and Squirrel Girl, at least for the beginning of this movie, because I do think we are, like you, tr- transitioning into a TV show. Right. Uh, but I think we're going to, I think the A and B plot are going to be separating Gwen and the other two before pushing them together n- near the, at least the middle or end of the movie. So I think we're going to have time for MJ there at the beginning, which I'm excited for. I want more of like, I thing. want more MJ. Don't get me wrong. No, I, I just believe think... me, Beatrice. I know you want more <laughs> MJ. Believe me. <laughs> but but just personally also like I'm just trying to see where Captain Marvel, where America Chavez, where all these other characters that are in the poster are gonna fit into this. That's why I'm thinking like maybe we won't. I don't know. Like it's possible it's possible we have a part of this plot in the movie where I, I, I just don't know. It's just so confusing, Beatrice. I don't know what we're setting up. I don't it's know. fine though. We're not supposed to. I Again, know. they haven't started marketing I... the movie. This is just like Kind of like background information that we may want to know for potential. I know future. Like, it, it, we don't know yet. It's fine. I, I I guess I guess I probably just had different expectations for this web short because I really felt like after the web short, I'd know what the main driving force of the movie would be. Not necessarily like the main strokes of it, but like what would be like the antagonist or what would be the main um, like conflict that would be driving things. And I don't feel like I know that yet, which is kind of off putting. And even though I I kind of saying the same thing over and over again, but it really is kind of driving me mad right now. And I can't really express it, Beatrice. It's driving me mad. I really just want to know what the conflict is of the movie. Because I, 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 when I ended it, when I first finished it, I thought it was going to be Kevin. But then as we talked more, I'm like, I don't know if that makes sense. Because that feels more like a season long thing. That feels like a late game type thing that we finished up dealing with Kevin. So is it going to be at the Inhumans? It's going to be about ghost spider being a villain like i don't know i don't know what we're gonna do here but that's kind of exciting i like it feel it feels like they can go in multiple directions here right, and right and that makes me hope that this is a tv show because it feels like they really did flesh out that we could go in a couple of directions here and i hope that we get depth for kamala i hope we get depth for doreen and i hope we get more fights i do i hope we get more fights like this that are just fun and kind of silly it does remind me of mysticons which you mentioned earlier the fights right. are not they don't feel like anyone's going to die during them. And that's a, I like that. I don't feel like every, any of these fights are over the top and like, are going to are world shattering things. They're just kids trying to be superheroes and it feels right. But going, but just to add to that, and this is a good transition into kind of the tone of this. Someone did die. Kevin did die. So it's not like there aren't any stakes in this in terms of like, it's what I like about this is that I was not expecting a death. I def- a death so blatantly talked about. And so uh, very clearly, like, they're talking about homicide. They're talking about murder. They're like, no, this, she doesn't get, you know, they they talked about how she's no longer a superhero. She's a vigilante now. She's a criminal now. And it, they use very strong language. And it was very dark. And the way that they kind of set this up where it's, oh, like, there is this darkness where it's kind of constantly Gwen is hearing people say, Ghost Spider killed Kevin. Yeah. So imagine her hearing that from everyone, from yeah. her family, from her friends, hearing Ghost Spider killed Kevin. She must blame herself. And obviously we don't get that a lot, but if it's not hard to like think about that and see what that I, does to someone. And I just I, – I love that darkness. I love that kind of tone that they set up. And and – Yes, yes, we when when you know we had that fight with Miss Marvel and Squirrel Girl and 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 Gwen, like yeah, we had that fight between them and it was fun and lighthearted and I knew that no one was gonna die. You know, we did get when when during that flashback we did get to see Gwen being grazed by a knife, the very knife that killed Kevin. Yeah. So I mean, it, even though that they're yes, we know that they're gonna be fine. There are stakes in this. There are stakes. Yeah, and, and that wasn't me saying – I do think there will be stakes in the movie. I just meant during this web seri- series. Oh, totally, I, totally. I didn't, I didn't really need or want stakes here, but I was surprised by the death thing. But, I, but it, I don't think it should be that surprising because I don't think there's any Spider-Man or Spider-Person origin story that doesn't involve someone dying. Like that's kind of just necessary, and true. I'm glad they didn't shy away from that. True, it, true. But so how – 
Like, did you 100% think that this was Peter before they said his name? Oh, 100%. Not... Yeah. 100%. I was like, oh, there's Peter. Because in the comics, wasn't it Peter who died? No, no. So, so, what, happened, so what happened in the comics is that in Spider-Gwen, Gwen is the one that gets bit by the spider during the field trip instead of Peter. But so Peter doesn't have – Peter's just Peter Parker. He doesn't get powers. But he sees spider, Spider-Woman spider swinging around saving people, and he thinks – I want to be like that person. I want to be special. And he does some science experiments and he turns himself into the lizard and uh, uh, Spider-Woman, acts, it, Gwen, accidentally kills him trying to stop him. And it's, uh, and so that, that, that's her um, Uncle Ben moment instead of Peter, Penn's, Peter Parker's Uncle Ben. That, that's the origin story. So it was, I was expecting like, oh, they already had the lizard happen. We're skipping right over that. And I was kind of excited for that. And then they said Kevin. I'm like, oh, I guess... Peter didn't die. I don't know where Peter is. But and- does he exist? And even, okay, because here's the thing. She's called Ghost Spider, which is a name yeah. given to her. So I'm assuming there's a Spider-Man out there. And they're like, oh, it's like the Spider-Man. Let's call her Ghost Spider. But you know? Or, just makes- <laughs> or, or maybe it's, because, and then here's the thing. If Spider-Man does exist, it may not be Peter. It may be Miles. Or it may be yeah. both. Maybe it's just like a Spideyverse kind of thing. I- and, you know, if... He does exist. How old is he? Because here's the thing. Here's and this is this is where it gets confusing, guys. This is what kind of sent me into like a crazy mind blown moment. So here's the thing. When Kamala Khan at Kamala Khan's age, like she when she's around in the comics, Peter's already an adult. Like Yes. He's he's an adult. Like he's lived his remember, Peter came was Peter was was in the comic books, he was what, in the fifties and the sixties. Like he was we have this entire history of Peter Parker. And yeah. Kamala Khan has essentially kind of took his place as like the teenage relatable yeah. superhero for today. Like she's like I finally understood what Peter Parker was when I read Kamala Khan, when I read Miss Marvel and Kamala yeah. Khan's run is Miss Marvel. Because for me, Peter Parker was always an adult. He was always yes. an adult to me. Because by the time that we were kids, he had already been he already grew up. And I think also Kamala also benefited from the fact that she got to have a modern writing team as her first totally, team setting her up. Totally, and, that, totally. and I'm not saying like I'm not like saying she was privileged or anything like that. I'm not saying that for a comic book character. I'm just saying that's great. I they got to really solidly set in stone who her character was, who she was for. Like they got like focus like focus like um what am I looking for? The word I'm looking for. Focus testing? I don't know. What am I looking for, Beatrice? Oh, uh uh. When they, like, screen for, like, what group demographic. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I don't know know the the name of it, though. I I I think that's right. Focus testing. Focus testing. Like, that's not a bad thing. Like, they found an audience for this character, Kamala Khan, and she fit into that niche that they – that Peter Parker left behind when he grew up. And this is – and she's just great. I just love her. She's this really deep character that has a lot of struggle going on because she is a Muslim American in – in New York Jersey. City. In Jersey. It's, in Jersey, sorry. It, this movie takes place in New York City, so I got confused, yeah, confused yeah. by that. But um, but in Jersey, but that that holds a lot of weight in it on its own because she's not like just Muslim in name. She's actually a practicing Muslim, and she has a lot of struggle with that. Just kind of like ha- – and, and I think she kind of got overshadowed when they put in Miles Morales as the new Spider-Man because everyone's like, oh, they're making Spider-Man black which is a whole other conversation that we're not going to have here. But I think they've really... Kamala Khan is kind of like one of the better modern characters they've ever made because she's just so interesting. I love her so much. No, totally. And I mean, I think if if I were to give the title of like the Spider-Man of the modern, of the current uh, canon of Marvel, it would be Miss Marvel. It would be Kamala. Like she's the yeah. one who na- it would be. She was the one who who nails that and fills that role. Like Miles, again, I haven't read much about him, but it's it's. I don't know. I just he feel... had big shoes to fill. That's yeah, the exactly. Problem. It's that's the problem. That's and the thing. he never and 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 again, this is not a hit on Miles. He just never could really grow into what he. Like, he never could grow to his full potential because everyone was reading, like, he's not Peter Parker. And that's not his fault. That's just that Peter Parker is one of the greatest superhero characters of all time. And that's not, it's not an easy she, thing to she, do. 
yeah, she, Kamala has definitely has more freedom to yeah. be her own person, whereas Miles has the the the, the brand of Spider Man to deal yes. with. Yes, and I so, think that, yeah. and, and that's why the Spider Verse is happening. That's why we're doing it that way instead of just getting a Miles Morales movie, which is good and bad. We're getting some fun stuff, and but we're also not having a fully just Miles alone movie, which is, I think, a missed opportunity. But I'm still excited for Spider Verse tangent yeah <laughs> but um but yeah so well anyway what was crazy so anyway what, what we, i was we supposed way to off say topic. what we i were... was supposed to say is that kamala when she when she, her present in her present peter parker's super old like he's an adult now whereas in for when stacy peter parker and her are contemporaries they're the same age so it's like which peter parker are we gonna get are we gonna get an adult peter parker or are we going to get a same age Peter Parker? Or are we going to get an adult Peter Parker and a Miles Morales? Like, I don't know what we're going to get. I but the fact that we get the name Ghost Spider tells me that th- she's not, they already have a Spider Man. That's why they I, didn't give her Spider Woman. I'm not sure, but I do like that they're, I'm not thrown off by people being the same age here. I do like that they have this wide, this, this long history of comic, comic book characters, and they're like, let's just make a new mashup. Because, I don't think we lose anything by having these characters be the same age. It's just more new. It's just new interactions. We haven't seen this before. And I'm really excited for it. I don't think, I don't think we're going to see Peter in the show or oh, movie. Totally. We're not going to see Peter. We're not going to but... see him. But I don't know if we're ever going to get a, a, a solid answer to that, unfortunately, of whether he's I, in this. I think story. we are. If we get a TV series, I think he will pop in eventually. Eventually. <laughs> We'll see. Not immediately, I, but eventually. We will see because I don't know. It's just I don't know. Well, I, I have nothing really else to say besides okay. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm, I'm, like okay, with well, everything else. Let's let's move on to like a, a fun little thing. What okay. is your because this uh, I talked about the dialogue a little bit, but yeah. they did use what I appreciate is that despite the demographic that they're going for, they didn't dumb down the dialogue a lot. No. They they had really solid dialogue. What was your favorite quote? From oh, the show. I really liked when Patriot showed up on the roof with uh, Gwen, and she said, "Oh, Patriot, you're here. You're tenacious." And she's like, "You could just the voice, the the line read on that was just really funny for me because you could just feel the like just annoyance dripping through Gwen's Gwen's voice there. And she's just like, "Oh my God, I do not want to deal with this anymore." And she just like jumps off the building. Like, there's something about spider spider people just being really annoyed with people <laughs> just like not stopping because like that's just a constant problem for like spider-man and spider-woman that their their village or, or their opponents just are so much stronger than them and just never get tired and have life so much easier than they do and it's just it i don't know it's just they just that one line read just totally sold me on gwen's character not that i wasn't in for her character before it's just that line read just i don't know just that is that is what a spider person needs to be that's what spider woman needs to be that character that line read her being kind of snarky in costume and just having this really serious dark past like we were talking about with Kevin. It just completely sold me on her and I really loved it. Cool, but I am disappointed that you didn't pick clearly the greatest line of the sh- of the 20 minute short. Like hello, I, fight I was saving anime it style. I was fight saving it for you. Animals, anime style. Okay, cuz okay, so basically Squirrel Girl while the she she and uh Kamala are fighting uh Gwen she goes, we need to fight anime style. And what's great is that there's a moment, there's like a frame where they actually change her, like the animation style and yeah. her design and make her look more anime. And that's a very anime thing to do. And like I- there are a lot of like gifts of say – uh, characters like that will go like from really cutesy to really serious and intense to, to back to cutesy or have a really intense character go there or whatever you have like the characters go all like be shoujo on us and then it'll be like super big eyes and very romantic like that's a very anime thing to do so the fact that they did it here kind of shows kind of the playfulness that the animators are doing with the animation style which I want to see more of in the show like this is something that I don't see enough of in western animation I see it on Steven Universe uh, occasionally I, I've seen it on on a couple shows. I think I've seen it on on a star versus the universe, I think. I that that rings a bell, but I can't pin where that was from. But um but I I, I can I, I, I love when they do it because when animation when anime does it it's so fun so then when the when western animation does it it's even be- like I, not even it's not that it's better done or anything but I'm like oh they got it from anime and I just love the the synergy between 
the East and West animation styles. Like, I love that synergy between them. They, they kind of feed off each other. Um, so, And it's also just, like, what animation should be doing. Like, if you're yeah. not doing stuff... If you're not doing stuff like this in your anime, in your animated show, like, like what's the point? You're doing the point of using animation is that you can do things you can't do in the real world. Like, and this is a perfect example of that, where like they got across exactly what they wanted to do with a, like a couple of frames of animation, which they couldn't really do with just the line read. It was great. Yeah, SpongeBob did something similar. In yeah, episode, SpongeBob, not... Spon- SpongeBob does stuff like that all the all the time. Time all with animation. Time. Like, they do, li- they do like, little things. Like, they sh- throw in, like, the physical sponge and starfish for Patrick. And, like, they, they do stuff like that all the time. Like, all I think time. that's great. I, I think it's it. great. It, it's, yeah. Not, Dylan's going to hate that we mentioned SpongeBob, but, I mean, it's it's a perfect example of this trope. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so let's talk about... Oh, before we move on, sorry, oh, one more yeah. quote. I really liked that Patriot used the Captain America line, that I can do this all day. I thought yeah. it was a little hammy, but I did find it funny that they threw it in there. Well, speaking of Patriot, we need to talk about him. Yes. We really do need to talk about him because I can't with his voice. <sighs> I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the voice actor. It's not his fault at all. It just doesn't really fit. Maybe it's because we're so used to the to Falcon, who is what Patriot's previous iteration was. We're so used to him. I'm just so used to... um. Um, Anthony Mackie's voice as Falcon slash Patriot that I just, it doesn't fit. And I don't know how, I thought Patriot was supposed to be older and he sounds really young in this. And I think he's supposed to be like really young. I, I think at one point Gwen calls it, him a boy. So. I'm not, I think he's supposed to be like a sidekick to Captain America in this. I think he's supposed yeah. to be just like a kid. But also just as a side note, his, I'm, I'm on the Wikipedia page for this, sh- for this, sh- for this movie. His actor is the only one that I can't click and like look at a history of what he's done. Like he is, I think this might be his first role. Mm, yeah. So I mean, it makes me bad. It's nothing on him. No. If anything, I'm just like, it, I, I'm surprised that he, that the character's so young in it. It, it, um, it just, it's just kind it threw of threw me off. It feels like, um, how should I put this? It feels like they didn't correctly express how old he was like the writers didn't like they didn't set him up for success as, as a as an actor i don't think because yeah. if like that and that's and, and like i said that that's just kind of what happens with the web series series like this like some things just kind of fall fall away because you can't don't have time to do all of them so i think this is just a sacrifice we made for the web series thing because patriot's probably just like a minor character in the movie and so they didn't put a lot of time into like hey here's his backstory like he might he might flesh out and make more sense that his voice actor might make more sense and the character might make more sense once we see the movie maybe maybe um well speaking of like i don't know about you but i got kind of a little bit of a flirtation between ghost spider and patriot i didn't feel that it just i, I didn't feel that but i could like, see how I, did. Did, like, I could see like i just i could not that i wanted it to happen no. but i could see like certain seeds planted between them and it's enough like content like again i i i I don't go on tumblr anymore but i was on tumblr long enough to see that that's enough for people to run with a ship and i i was like okay that's there's i i could like you know there is it a hint at something more is it just harmless flirtation from snarky ghost spider who knows but maybe maybe he will take a he'll play a a larger role in a Uh, tv show who knows i think i figured it out Camille McFadden, the actor for Patriot, he's one of the live action actors for a lot of Disney shows. They 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 tend Disney oh, tends to Oh yeah, yeah, they do tend to stay within the family. Yeah. Yeah, they tend they tend to be a little cannibalistic with that. Is that the word? Yeah. Well they tend to just kind of steal actors here and there. Yeah. And yeah. that makes sense. Um that they gotcha. do that. Gotcha. I don't, well, that, doesn't, just, that doesn't explain everything. I was just kind of giving background to who. Well, he, it, it it tells me that he's young in the Yeah, he show. is very young. I Even don't, though it, like, you know, Falcon like He's. I think it's safe to say that Falcon is still like Captain America's sidekick, just like Bucky is in the MCU. Like, kind of in a way, like Falcon's like his sidekick. This, this feels more like the sidekicks though in Young Justice. Like, I know, I know. Like the sidekicks are much younger. Still, I just from Falcon has always been like older, and I just don't like him being younger. I guess. Wow, he is twenty two. He does not sound. Wow, that's he's a young sounding fella. Okay. He is- 
That is, he didn't, like, this is, this is a compliment. He sounds much younger than 22 in that, in that short. Yeah, he does. He does. We don't know when they recorded this. Maybe no, they recorded don't. this a couple years ago. Like, Maybe knows? they did. It, it's completely possible because this, it seemed like this movie was in production or like was, there were hints of it for a while. Like we actually got an announcement last year, but it felt like we'd be getting hints of it. Yeah, an for a good chunk. A yeah. Time. Cause everyone knows like it, usually the announcement doesn't mean like, oh, they just decided this. It's been in the works it's for been a while. Works. Because um, Fai, how do you pronounce it? Fai, he, he, Fai, he, he, he yeah. yeah, he hints at stuff years and years time. and years. Ahead. All the time. We That's about, why I'm saying that maybe Miss Marvel, we are going to get a live action because he's already started to hint at it. Because so. we learned about Captain Marvel before so Civil War long. came out. Like, that's how long ago we found out yeah. about her. Yeah. You yeah. know, we found out we found about Captain Marvel the, when we learned the Not title even. of the war. Not even. No, we found out about Mar- Captain Marvel in Age of Ultron because she was supposed to be in Age of Ultron. And oh, then what? they switched. Yeah, she was supposed to like do like a cameo or something. And then they decided oh, not to. Oh, I remember that now. Yeah. There is the, ca- the cameo thing is what reminded me. I thought you meant like yeah. she was supposed to be in like the story. No, like, no, no. She yeah. was like supposed to do a cameo in Age of Ultron. And Actually, they're like, no, let's not. Bill's going to be so happy that we talk about MCU this much. <laughs> so happy with that. Okay, okay. Back on topic. Fine. Back on topic. Um, uh, so let's talk about this one, my biggest negative, which we kind of talked about a little bit with you earlier. You talked about like the lack of people. Yeah. For me, it was that there was just a lot of destruction of property happening. But, but I don't think I noticed it, but I might just be that I was focused more on what was going on. I just didn't notice it in the background. Like, what are you talking about? Like, for instance, when Kamala is huge, she smashes against the building, oh. has lights on, has people inside them, and you hear a crunch, a crumble, a crackle yeah. of a building. And then it's just like, we're fine. It's fine. No one, again, there's no people, so you don't hear people worry, so you don't have people to worry about. But then I'm like, there's, a, there's just a lot of destruction of things. And it's just, there was ex- explosions between like the Patriot and Gwen fights. Like there was, yeah. there was a lot of things happening with them. You know, there's just, oh. there's quite a bit of, of, of d- destruction. Yeah. And it's just kind of in the background and it just doesn't seem that. I, that. I have a comment to make about that. But before I forget, because we just got off of Patriot. I just have to say, his shield is so stupid. I'm sorry. His shield is so I stupid. Know. I can't get over that he can fly on it. I can't. Again, I can't. It used to be Falcon, so maybe that's I, why. But... I, this, again, is not a hit against anybody. I just think it's, it's stupid can be good. It's just I'm not sure how to feel about the stupid shield yet because he can like, turn it into like, a green goblin glider. But Yeah, Eddie... you're right. Is that a hint? Is that a hint might, of what's to come? Might. Maybe. Maybe. Like, have you seen? Have you seen the? the uh, I'm getting. I'm not going back to MCU. I'm sorry. I was about to talk about a theory. It's not important. We're getting back on topic. The, okay. That property damage thing. Um. Have you know in like? Have you read or like know the general story of Ultimate Spider-Man? Like the the run that happened with the end with ended with death of Spider-Man. Kind of. Not really. So a major. A major um, plot point in that, or a major like recurring thing comes up in that is that Shield keeps jumping in and paying for stuff that peter does and paying for the damages that happen in this fight and like kind of revealing that you and being like you have superpowers you're kind of like you belong to me nick fury now because i keep track of people like you i mm. keep, i i'm like your owner now because when you become an adult you have to work for me or you're not going to be allowed to be a superhero that's just how it is and gotcha. i was expecting something like that to happen here because superheroes can't just go around destroying stuff no matter how you feel about like civil war that like whole discussion that happened in that movie i think it's true that they can't just go around breaking destroying things yeah Yeah. there there is there is discretion that needs to be had here and not not that yeah not gonna get into the philosophy of that and all that stuff but or the ethics but they need to it, it kamala khan did make a mistake there it's kind of the point i'm making like she did almost break an entire apartment complex essentially and i'm kind of interested to see if they touch on stuff like that in the movie because it kind of feels like the kind of thing that they touch on in this kind of series it totally. feels like it totally feels because i mean it's 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 a, it's a mistake that i feel like a lot of younger superheroes would make that they don't yeah. think about that and even more important than that it can be framed in a way that can be shown as a lesson can be shown as something totally. like responsibility you can, you can talk about responsibility you can talk about just it's not breaking things in general like it just, just feels being smart you know being being, being yeah. aware yeah yeah and it feels like 
it, it just feels like this show could be a medium for like in a similar way to like Avatar had like these like you learn stuff from it like you learned ethical lessons from Avatar yeah. and Black Defender. This feels like a good vehicle for doing lessons like that too in ways that don't feel preachy because I can easily see a way where they can have Shield come in be like hey you can't do this anymore and have a good story going on while also being like Kamala's like yeah I have to like fight this guy but I have to be careful not to break that while I'm doing it because that's something superheroes need to do they need to not break the city while they're saving it and yeah. I, I find that interesting if I, only if only you know if only the DC cinematic universe would learn would, from that like okay on, on another tangent. <laughs> another another tangent. No, we won't get into it. I just see it. let the comment go. Let the comment go. Just let me have this comment. Don't react to it. I just made it. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Um, <laughs> um but yeah. Dangerous. This is bad. This is dangerous to have both of us here. It is. It is. We need someone to like stop us. We need someone to be like, okay, back to animation. Back to animation. Back to- um, okay, fine. Back to animation. I do want to before we finish this because I think we've talked about everything. I think there's not much else to talk about here. There's not oh, much else to talk. Did, yes. What is what is Squirrel Girl Squirrel Girl's power set in this show? Have they really shown us? Like, I know it is in the comics. It's like everything, but like, it doesn't feel like she's all powerful in this show. Like I mean, she, 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 I know that she kind of has kind of like Ant Man. She can control squirrels. Yeah, and they showed that. It's clear that she either has like enhanced reflexes or enhanced yeah. something like that. And it's, but it doesn't seem like because in the comics, Squirrel Girl is kind of infamous infamous for defeating Thanos by herself <laughs> in, in one iteration. <laughs> um, like she is very she's crazy. Yeah, no, she's very powerful, but I don't think she's that powerful in this series no i, I don't think so she feels so. more on the level of like someone like spider-man or a little weaker than that but we yeah. may see something different we don't know no well, we, we we got very little but um we'll see i think i'm excited i'm excited to see squirrel girl in this medium i think yes. for this kind of tone and this demographic i think she's gonna do well and i think she's gonna be a very good comic relief I I think, I think there's going to be more to her than comic relief, but I think that she's going to be she's going to be something that's going to balance out the darkness of Gwen, for instance. I I think for a similar reason that like so Deadpool is a character that really can't exist outside of R-rated movies and stuff like that. Like he can, but it just doesn't really work. It just doesn't you don't get right. the full Deadpool. I think a similar thing could be said for Squirrel Girl can't really exist out of a media that is not animated because you need yeah. she needs to like be expressive in a way that a human actor can't really show yeah <laughs> and and you need to have all these squirrels going around like it's just so silly it just doesn't feel like it fits in live action i feel like this is the perfect place to have squirrel girl i yeah. there were a lot of people that were really excited to have her live action i'm just not sure it would work this feels much better and i like it yeah. i'm excited yeah totally totally well i want to finish off the last thing for me is i I'm going to compare this to the DC superhero animated short that we got before Teen oh. Titans Go to the Movies, oh, which is this – it's a short that's essentially, again, it's a female-focused um, animated short about Batgirl and Wonder Woman and basically all these female superheroes coming together to defeat mm-hmm. an evil. Yep. And – this is what I was talking about. If you listen to the Teen Titans Go to the Movies podcast, I went on a mini rant about how frustrating it was for me to watch that short because I was really annoyed about how it made the characters seem kind of silly. It made them seem dumber than what these characters actually were. Um, it just, it, it gave us all these female characters, yet it gave us them in a sense, in a weaker sense, in terms of their intelligence, in terms of their capabilities. And I was just very annoyed with the short. I was like, if this is what the entire, well, the the all-female-led team was going to be, I don't want any part of it. Like, I don't want it. Um, And that's what I got with that. And if you compare that to this, even just one of these shorts, okay? So let's make it a fair fight. Give it that short, four-minute short to one of these four-minute shorts. And it's so drastic in terms of how serious this is. Or not yeah. serious in terms of, like, tone. But I, serious in terms of these characters are people. And yeah. these, that's just, they just happen to be women. They yeah. just happen to be women, but that's it. That's as far as it goes. And they actually have lives and they have personalities. And they're not just these caricatures of themselves. They're not lesser than their comic book selves. They're not dumbed down for the sake of, 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 
of the demographic or whatever. They're just no. they're really well written and they they know what they're doing and that's never questioned. And even though you have a moment, for instance, when you have Gwen Stacy fighting with the squirrel, you know, trying to get away. Obviously, that's a silly moment. And obviously, like in a in a more serious thing, Gwen Stacy would beat her, but beat that squirrel no problem. But it still works because you it see doesn't... her. It doesn't it's feel like the, it's a joke about her being a girl that she couldn't exactly. do it. Exactly, it, it, and that's it just, just that. It doesn't define her. Do you no. see her being like it's that's just like, oh, that's just a funny moment. It's not the entirety of the short, and there's just other moments in the short where it's like, oh, she knows what she's doing. She can handle herself. And she calls it out. Like after the silly moment's over, she's like, Yeah, I'm not doing this anymore, squirrel. I'm just gonna do something else and leave you behind now. Like Yeah. It, yeah, it, 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 it became clear that, that this is just supposed to be a gag and we're moving on, like she clearly can beat a squirrel. It's fine. Like it 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 this is like all these characters are real characters. They don't feel like they're. I'm trying to think of other than like that Teen Titans, what you mentioned already. I'm trying to think of a different example of where this really shined, but it, it's hard to think of bad because bad stuff like this I just kind of block out after a point. The interest, I mean, I like, mean like, for, for, Forces of Destiny kind of worked for Star mm, Wars. The thing with Forces yeah. of Destiny though is that it's not serialized. Um, yeah. it's, again, not like the DC one. That was just a one-off short. But I think we're going to get like a TV show from DC from this or something. Something's happening with that. But with Forces of Destiny, it was a, it's a similar thing. It's not serialized, but it's like moments. And it's it's that I feel like that one's a little bit more boring than than what we got here with Uprising because simply because that one's just like. A lot of Easter eggs, a lot of like, ooh, look, yeah. like this is fun, this is nice. It's like, oh, and, oh, look, it's the original voice actors of you, like, it's Daisy Ridley voicing Ray again and stuff. Yeah. You know what it is? I think I just figured it out. The tone of this is the tone of the original Teen Titans, not Teen Titans yes. Go. This is just yes. Teen Titans. This is like, yes. there are serious things going on here, but they're not afraid to go into weird anime or really silly joke stuff in the background. Cause it, and it doesn't take away from what you're watching. That's really the, because I was trying to, because, not many shows can do that squirrel scene and not have it undermine everything else that's going on. Yeah. And, this, and this web serial did it successfully, which is very surprising. Uh, yeah. And, and this, I think this is just they, – they're looking at other shows that did stuff like this, saw which ones had success, and they're like, hey, Teen Titans did it. And I think that they just tried to emulate that in a way. And that's not bad. I think that's a really good idea because Teen, Teen Titans is kind of like a high bar for superhero shows, totally. especially for, for – female um superheroes to have like like to representation in shows like you have raven and starfire who are great obviously it'd be great if there are more women in teen titans but that's we're not gonna have a discussion about a what 13 year old show at this point <laughs> that's a different thing but starfire and raven are great characters and i think these are gr- good foundations for characters similar to them yeah yeah absolutely i just think it's this is this is what when basically I'm, when I'm saying it, like this is what I want to see when I'm when people make like these yeah. projects of all female characters. This is what I want. There this was... is the type of thing where it's it's not it's not dolled up and super super oh, like hyper feminized, which sometimes happens. Where sometimes it's like oh we got to make them look like dolls. Yeah. Um, just two D version. It's like that's not necessarily what happens here. Um, it's just. A great story, and it just happens to be all women, but guys can enjoy it too. I don't think there was a single moment that anyone called out that they were specifically yeah. girls. Like, yeah, no, I don't no, think that's a thing. They just are like, this is just these are just the characters we're going to focus on, but yeah. it's not going to be like say intentionally like, oh, this is female led. Like, and it's, no. I don't like nothing irks me more than when it's a line of, oh, it's a girls' night out or something. It's like, yep. no, don't don't say that. That's silly. It's yeah. like, no. <laughs> what one. You don't need to tell me that everyone on screen is a woman. I'm we're, like we're whenever our... I watch a movie where it's all guys, I don't go, "Oh, look, it's a sausage fetch." I mean, I do now because now I point it out, but no one in the movie <laughs> actually goes, "Oh, this is such a sausage fest." Or this is a it's boys' like... night out. We don't need to say that. Exactly, like... no one says it. So no. it's like, why do, do, should we have to point it out when it's all women? But also, know? speaking of the women side of this, I do. I, I it was talked about when the when the trailer first started first came out for this this um web series but it's really great that Gwen, Kamala and Squirrel Girl all have different designs. They're not just like yes. the same figure with a different face. They're different yes. body shapes, specific, especially Kamala God who can change your body, but it's it's great. It's good. I like that a lot. And I think there's a little less variation in the band girls, but they are background characters. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm willing to forgive that a little bit more. Yeah, 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 I agree. I mean, 
I, 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 there's so many shows that are all female and they have interchangeable faces. Yeah. And on the one hand, I'm like, it's the style and it's also convenient if you don't have a lot of money. I yeah. get it. But also, like, they, you know, they made an effort and I really, and it, it and shows and I really appreciate God. it. Even in, in the band scene, uh, when they're all playing, like, they have to, even though, yes, they're, Bodies may be different. I mean, maybe the same, similar. Their faces are different. Yes, they definitely. You know, are which different. is, I feel like, it is really important. And we see a good, wide variety of girls from all yes. over. It's like we get representation of girls from all different backgrounds and ethnicities, and I think that's also really important and something that should be celebrated and should be pointed out. That's like, yes, we're getting diversity in this show, and I'm really excited. Like for me, this was very promising. This hit all the marks of what I wanted to see, and I can't wait for the movie now because I thought, oh. This is the tone. Oh, this is the style. Oh, this is what we're going to get? Give me more of it. Yeah, like, it's just, especially the scene where Gloria was trying to comfort Gwen. I yes! really, I really liked that scene. I really yes! thought that that was the exact tone we needed for this kind of show. I, we're getting straight-up discussions about mental health. Yeah. Overtly so. I Double also... Was, that's brilliant. But also, speaking of, Gwen's design is great. I love her, like, pink, oh, the God. pink highlights in her hair. They're great. They're really cute. Yes, I love it. I will say one thing, and we we're going on long, so yeah. I, we'll wrap this up. I promise. But one thing, I, even though I love Gwen's hair, um, and I love the pink and everything, it's just Quake. About MJ. Oh, okay. I was, I was about Quake's I was hair. I think MJ. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Quake because yeah. I remember. I just remember like a couple months ago, reading someone tweet about this, and I was like, "Oh my god, you're to- totally right." A lot of like Asian characters, like a lot of Asian girls, are given that hairstyle where it's like short bob and or long bob, but it's always like colored, like at the tips. And yeah. Quake was given that haircut again, and I'm just like, "Come on, guys! Like, yeah, come on, do something different. Get creative. You don't have to do that." Um, you really don't. Ever, character every single asian female character like you don't have to like east asian at least like you don't have to do that um it's fine you know she doesn't need the what did she have blue highlights I think. it was it was like purple at the tips and I was i'm colorblind like, okay you know because because oh it's fine sorry but um no uh what's her name from deadpool has it too oh purple she had a purple the uh, same haircut Theo? just not a bob yeah are, are, she had it in deadpool 2 yeah. yeah in deadpool 2 she had it so i'm just like does it do they always it, have to have it? Like, yeah, because no, it's like, hashtag anime or hashtag Japan or whatever. Like, but they, at the same again at the same time, like goodness gracious, like come on, like even in anime, I see more variety of hairstyles. Yeah. Like, well, it's <laughs> always like the tips, and I'm just like, come on. Anyway, it, um, it, to, I didn't even say that. Catch on to that, and but now that you've said it, like it's just. I can't believe they did that again. I just kind of, I think at this point, it's just like, okay, that's that's what they're doing because they always do it. Like, it's it, it's so prevalent that I just kind of, it just gets filtered out in my brain at this point. There's a lot to this I'm very confused about, Beatrice. I think that's what I, you can gather from this whole podcast. I don't know what to expect of the movie. Well, we'll we'll find out. Yes. We'll find out in a couple months uh, when <laughs> we find out more information about this movie, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I think that does it for us. Uh, you yep. can find out all the info on this podcast at OverlyAnimated.com. You can join us on Discord. Please do join us on Discord to text chat about animation at OverlyAnimated.com slash Discord. You can support us via Patreon at Patreon.com slash OverlyAnimated. Thanks to all our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Brendan, a.k.a. Kells. And thanks, as always, to our Patreon executive producers, John, Ryan, Steve, Alex, Andy, and Hugh. Um, Andy, where can people find you outside the podcast? Uh, nowhere, because I don't use anything. Okay. You can find him on Discord. Yeah, you can find me on Discord. I'll be around. You can talk to me. I'm usually pretty friendly. But other than that, I don't use anything. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, and for me, you can find me on Twitter at Beatrice Murad. And you can also find me on my YouTube channel at the B Real Movie Channel. So B-R-E-E-L. Which you have some great reviews on channel. there, Beatrice. Thank you. Um, I'm hopefully I'm gonna get hopefully I'll get to review Crazy Rich Asians this week. Um, hopefully, and uh, I'm working on something that I've been mean to get out into the public. Um, I'm working on that's a little different, but I'm excited to do, and uh, that I'm nervous to do because it's a little different. But anyway, so go check me out there if you want, please, and subscribe, please. I'm like one, like subscription away from 100 and that gives me a custom url so Ooh. please 
Yeah, I'm like two away or something. I've been two away for like months. Help anyway, Beatrice customize her URL. Come on, give me. I want to customize my URL so bad. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.